Hey, listen to Commander Clickout Podcast, episode 404. I'm Brando. I'm here with Ryan. We're going to go back in time to talk about the Doctor and one of his companions. Now, hit our theme song! Hey, Ryan. We're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? Good. What is going down? Whole bunch is going down. We have a, a, a deck from way, way back, like mm. three three products and four <laughs> weeks ago to talk about. We've got some stories to tell, a big announcement to make, some people to thank. Before we get to any of that, we have to thank our official business daddies, FusionGamingOnline.com, your source for all your gaming needs. And we also have to acknowledge the second coolest thing to come out of Regina, Pile of Bones beer. It is delicious. Yes, I haven't been drinking any Pile of Bones only for the fact that I've had a cold, so you're going to hear that in my voice a little bit, but uh, when I'm better, I will drink it because it is delicious. I had some while I was sorting through my Ixalan chat. Oh yeah, look at you go. Yeah. Sorting through trash and drinking pile of bones. What Man. a What a ironic thing to do. Yeah, you had to, <laughs> when you're doing something terrible, you should also do something good to, what do you, what's the word? Counterbalance it? Yes, yes, is yes. Is that the word I'm looking for? Yes, counter it if it has the same CMC. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Big thanks to Pile of Bones. They are the official sponsors of uh, Sidewalk, Sidewalk Slam. Slam. Yeah. Coming up. The first one's off to Tyler, and he better freaking make it look good. Because... Well, maybe it'll be out by the time because this is like oh yeah two weeks from now that we're recording. We're we are front loading the shit out of these shows. So if we feel like we're untopical, it's because we're recording two weeks ago because mm-hmm. we got to get ready for the Christmas season where Ryan's mm. away a little bit and I'm going to be away a little bit. And everything's really busy. You guys know what yeah, it's like. They know. They know. The holiday season's a pretty big deal for everybody. Yep, and yep, everybody's yep. being around. That's it. So, uh, speaking of the holiday season, it's not too late to order from the business daddies, fusiongamingonline.com, because they ship so fast. They and fast. if you want to get a discount like I did on all my Ixalan stuff, yep. you know, Ixalan 15 products ago at yep. this point in time, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, you can use CCO Summer, even though it's the winter, promo code to get a discount. Pretty cool. And if it's your first time using uh, or or ordering from Fusion, you can use CCO Perks promo code to get 10% store credit kickback when you spend over $100 Canadian. So you're saying you could spend less on things you're going to buy anyway, get some of it back, and then use it to buy more stuff. Correct. Seems like a good deal. Yep. Sleeves, gaming supplies, binders, those giant eight-foot playmat, like Lord of the Rings playmats, they got them. Oh, neat. Yeah, it's taking a lot of my internal fortitude to not buy the giant one and use it on sidewalk slam but then i say ryan it's sidewalk slam yeah we're not going to use not, the lord of the rings crap on sidewalk not, slam. not lord of the rings walk slam yeah only you care about it being lord of the rings nobody else and, does. and alex he barely cares oh no he cares i talked to him yesterday he's like i barely care no he does i only secretly care well he lied to me then yeah yeah, well, F, well, he lied F to him. you before me. <laughs> Jeez. So big thanks to Fusion. We like working with those guys. And uh, if you like getting discounts on stuff you're going to freaking buy anyways, Just do you that. might as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Do Makes that. perfect sense. Uh, a couple little quick business things because it's it's the same business as it ever is. If you want other ways to support the show, the CCO store at commandercookout.com. If you want to become a patron at patreon.com slash CCO podcast, you can get a discount there for being a patron. Yeah. That's a good deal. Yeah. Become a patron. Say, hey, Ryan, I want some t-shirts and some sweaters and some dukes and stuff. I'll say, hey, here's the promo code to uh, get a discount because you're a patron. Yeah. And the dukes are cool because they keep you from getting shot. Yes, safety orange. Yeah. I should have got them that were reflective. No, you can't. You don't want to hunt in reflective gear. No, no, no. Because no, no. then, then the animals will see you. Yes, yes. But you could wear them on a construction project. Yes. yes. Over top of your hat that makes it so you don't die when you get hit in the head with stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Will that still keep your head warm? I guess a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. The guys wear toques and stuff underneath their... Usually it's like balaclavas or and uh, stuff. Yeah. yeah, you can adjust how how hard hats fit. Hey, and what do I know about construction sites? Yeah, that's it. So we have not a new patron, but our next way to support coffee.com slash commander cookout. We've got a pledge there oh. by a one Killian Doyle. Now, Killian is a patron. Nickname C D Compact Dicks was the name. <laughs> That's a good one. That, that is I a good like name. That. that is a good name. But she says, okay, I feel like you guys can do better. Wait a second. Whoa. Hang on. Wait. She's from Ireland. Wait, wait, whoa. Wait, wait, wait. You said she? 
Yes. She. As in not he? Yes. As, as in a girl on the internet? What? She probably wants to marry Uncle oh, Brandon. Yeah, is she my girlfriend now? Yes. Ooh. Every girl on the internet ever, according to the internet. Yeah, is that wow. Now wants to marry Uncle Brandon. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right. Okay. Okay. All Killian right. Doyle. You right. are marrying the redheaded stepchild. Oh man. Guinness drinking. <laughs> uh, well, so far I'm cool. Uh Oh man, I tried to I tried to do the Ric Flair thing where I rhymed something with drinking. Frick. I, <laughs> he didn't rhyme, he just had a cadence. It's like Guinness drinking, potato slinking. Uh, I don't know, northern fighting, uh, school going to leprechaun licking, <laughs> pot of gold collecting, <laughs> son of a gun. I don't know. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I like I like leprechaun licking. <laughs> yes. I actually just watched Leprechaun in Space the other day and uh it has a uh, Heidi from Tool Time on it. Oh yeah. And I think somebody from Supernatural is also in there. So actually Like Supernatural stars. the show? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like I've actual seen that show. stars that are famous. Kept a Heidi Ish. from Tool Time? Ish. Well, you recognize her when you see her you do cuz I did. If you've ever watched Home Improvement, yes, you will recognize her and you'll go Where's she from? And then you look at her IMDb, and first thing that pops up, Heidi from Home Improvement, and you go, "Yeah!" <laughs> so she's there. She's in the. She's in the unconscious. She's in there. Killian Doyle licking leprechauns from space. Yep, that's a long nickname. So you can pick and choose which of those words you want. To use. Well, it has lots of extra letters, just like every other Irish name. Yes, the superfluous vowels. <laughs> yes, or well, sur- superfluous. Consonants that make vowel sounds even better. Yes, welcome to the Gaelic language. Oh man, we could spell out Killian Doyle Leprechaun Liquor from Space, and then she's like, what the hell? Is it? But just spell it all as one word, and somebody says, "What the hell does that say?" And she'll say, "Jane, <laughs> Jane." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my boss, my boss. Um, I, I told I told Killian that I know lots of things about like the Gaelic culture and the Gaelic games and Ireland, because I used to onboard like Irish and Scottish people uh, to work at the mine. Guinness, and, potatoes, leprechaun. And my boss... Rain. Uh, yes, you very much rain. Depression. Golf. Yeah, uh, golf? D- uh, depression, but suppressed depression, so they can go back to work. <laughs> uh, my boss is named Seamus, and, and one time another Irish guy called him James, and I was like, what? And he goes, yeah, Seamus is James. I'm like, what? What? He make goes, any yeah, sense. all Gaelic names have their other, their other like English name. That's yeah. one of those name things. I don't understand that. Yeah. I don't. It's it's translating versus transliterating. It's, it's like Deutschland. It means Germany. Yes, Germans call it Deutschland. It's Deutschland, but it's Germany. But it's Germany. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't understand it. My name is Brando. Oh, that means Keith. No, it fucking doesn't. My name is Brando. <laughs> Keith, Uncle Keith. <laughs> Man, that makes me sound like a like a pedo chef, doesn't it? Oh man, Keith. Uncle Keith, cook up on you. Let's oh. hit him with the magic thing. Then let's hit him with the big announcement. Okay, got oh. a big announcement. Big killing you, leprechaun licking mother ass. <laughs> well, uh, I guess thank you for the pledge on coffee.com. We appreciate it. Yes, very much. So, mm-hmm. um, I'm just checking for any other um, MTG plans for Christmas. You got any? No. I guess we're not in Christmas mode yet, but yeah, this we, is like the end of November. We got to get in the mindset. Well, as we record this, it's the middle of November. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Hit him with some magic stuff. Okay, so today we're going back to four weeks ago, three yep. sets ago with yep. Doctor Whom. Oh, Doctor Whom. Doctor Whom. <laughs> and we're going to talk about the twelfth Doctor. He's a four four. Yep. Or is it in three? Legendary creature, Time Lord, Doctor. The first spell you cast from anywhere other than your hand each turn has demonstrate. Mm-hmm. Maybe that means you can copy it if an opponent also copies it. Also has whenever you copy a spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on the 12th Doctor. You can copy it, and if you do, another opponent does copy it. Yes. yes so you yes, play yes. two and they play one. Yes. And it's a whole big thing. And then we also have Clara Oswald. She's a 2-6 six for 6 human advisor. Impo- and she has impossible girl. If Clara Oswald is in you, is your commander, you can pick a color. She is that color. She also has doctor's companion, so she can be your other commander if you have a doctor. And the main reason you play her is because she says if a triggered ability of a doctor you control triggers, it triggers an additional time. In this case, it's important to note we have picked green. Green with Clara Oswald. Green. Now this 
comes from good friend of the show and uh, past CCO experience veteran. attendee, veteran. Yeah. yeah, he's got a two now. A survivor at this point. Yeah, very much so. This is from Zoiberg Jesus. And previously, our second astronaut friend, now our plumber friend. Oh. Stop the house in Vegas from blowing up by turning off the gas so it stopped leaking. Very cool. Mm-hmm. I sort of appreciate that. Yeah. But, I mean, part of me wishes the house just went up with all of us in it, but that's the winter seasonal depression talking. Yeah, you could, man, could you imagine the news? CCO explodes. And everybody be like, oh shit, we should listen to it. Yeah, oh, you check meant out CCO, yeah. Like, all the, yeah, oh, you meant literally. Imagine all the ad revenue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, quick announcement. We did switch platforms. People told me not to make a big deal of it, but I don't want anybody to think that Uncle Ryan and your good friend Brando <laughs> are going to be making frickin' money hand over fist. But you might hear an ad or two at the start or end of the show because shit's expensive and this is the only way that I can afford to continue keeping the ship and pointing in the right direction. So if you hear an ad on the show, sue me. Okay? I'm sorry. No, I have to. No, they're from America. Don't tell them to do that. Oh, frick. They might actually. Ah, uh, well, but we're Canadian. It's We're practically impervious to being sued. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we're absolved from everything, including healthcare. Oh, I love that. Um, or health care spending. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So I'm sorry, but that's the way it's got to be. So there it is. We apologize. Yes. We have got a double trigger cascade demonstrate deck. This deck is a rules nightmare. And, oh, great. Uh, it's, I, I don't know if that's going to be a strength or a weakness, but we're going to tech the deck. It's going to be fantastic. It's very reminiscent of my Teamer Cascade Super Friends deck. Yeah. And I hope to glean some inspiration from this list in uh, uh, for my deck that I will be tweaking with all of the new Doctor Who Cascade stuff that I'm going to get from Fusion. Did I say it was the 12th Doctor or did I just say it was a Doctor? Well, it's the 12th Doctor. Okay. The one that looks like James Dean with sunglasses standing on a cinder block. James Peen with his guitar. That's so stupid. I've never watched the 12th Doctor, but I just look at that and know he's an idiot. Also, also, quick critique on this one. The actor that plays the 12th Doctor (laughs) also played some other asshole in one other episode of the show. You shouldn't do that, because people are going to look back at that and think, oh, blah, 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 blah. Is that real? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, like he played like a main character. It was just in one episode. It was the Pompeii one. Where they go back and it's like Pompeii Volcano Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the 12th Doctor's actor is there. But with the way Doctor Who works, like how are you not to imply that that's him? Huh. Right? Yeah. So maybe maybe they were implying that that's him. Maybe Doctor Who people let us know. Maybe Zoe J, he says he's a huge uh, Doctor Who head. Uh, maybe he can let us know in the comments. Great way to drive engage- engagement and a free way to help with your friends at Commander Cook Up Podcast. Sweet. You should be watching on YouTube anyways. You should be. Yeah. Editor Joe works really hard, especially during that nickname segment. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so you, 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 here's another reason to watch on YouTube. You can see Ryan's excited face and I make this super sweet oh, announcement. Yeah. Okay. So check this out. Check this out. Check this out. CCO Experience Chicago. Chicago. Will include wind. Will include probably miserable weather. A visit to a shit fountain. A trying a new kind of pizza for your boy Brando, and if you are a member of CCO Nation, attending the convention, if you want to hang out with your boys but don't know where to find us, you know where you might be able to find your boys, Ryan and Brando, at whatever these things are called, Magic Fest Chicago, is that what it's called? Uh, uh, MagicCon. You know where you can find us at MagicCon Chicago? Where? In the official content creator oh. area, as yeah, boy. You got accepted? I sure did. Oh, no way. And they sent me an additional free pass that I'm going to pass on to my buddy oh, Ryan pew, 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 pew. so that we can go to the official content creator area, hang out with you guys, take part in some of the oh, actual so cool. content creator events. I'll run this by Ryan. We have till December 3rd, which I think is still coming up as you guys listen to this, yeah. to sign up for, like, if we want to do whatever. A they, panel or whatever. Yeah, so you're probably going to see... I'm going to try and get it so we can both do it, but at Did least me and some of these Did you not do things? one of those Twitter announcements just so you could announce it on the show? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, yeah. heard his, he heard his Twitter cred just to make me happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I wanted everybody oh, else to hear man, it first. You will forever not chase clout. I, I can't help it. I It's just not me. <laughs> oh, man, that's fantastic. Yeah, so that's going to be really cool. So we'll be able to be a part of some of the more official fandom stuff, less some stuff to give away, I hope. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. I haven't got all the details yet, but we will be there 
in the official capacity. Sweet. And also in the same capacity, we're always therein, so... You know what that means. <laughs> yeah, but if you're looking for us, at least at some points, you'll be able to find us doing some of that official Yeah, that's super stuff. cool. Uh, we'll give packs away, we'll have stickers and tokens to give away, jam some games, and whatever the creator area looks like, right? Yeah. You saw in Vegas yeah. how it was like bigger and expanded over and above how it was in Minneapolis. Yeah. And, uh... Hey, that's super cool. Yeah, we we have to. The way that it works, the, uh, just a peek behind the curtain, the way that it has to work is we do separate applications. Yeah. And usually I do those applications as soon as they come out. Mm -hmm. This time I did not. And I was like, oh, I have lots of time. So did I was not. like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna do this now. Missed the deadline. <laughs> oh, so I applied for a press pass, which I had in Vegas, which is cool because it gave me access to different stuff. And uh, I didn't have a creator pass, even though that's what I wanted, because they gave them only to new people in Vegas who had never had one before. Yeah. So um, in, in Chicago, I guess, yeah. either they thought you were new <laughs> or... Um, they're giving them to whoever like applies based on however they choose. I feel my answer to the essay question probably got them. Oh yeah, because I treated it like a fucking essay question. I don't know what that means. I told but... them all about why it's important that I be there so that all of you guys will come. Hey, that's pretty cool. Yeah, all th every thousands of people through the door just to see Commander Cookout. Yeah. Yes. That's what I told them. Okay, that's So don't fun. let me down. That's exciting. Okay. Yeah, we better have a lineup. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's cool. Yeah. We, we, uh, we'll see everybody there. CCO Experience, of course. The the nation, the house, and everybody that's there. There's going to be three or four houses and Ooh. apartments and, and hotels that are like chumming together. So I hope that we can set up sort of like we did in Vegas, how we had three or four tables that was all Commander Cookout. I want to make it like five or eight or 10 tables, yeah. all commander cookout people. And when our time in the creator area comes, just flock Migrate. there and we'll, yeah. we'll do as much giveaways or booster packs or stuff that Watsy gives us because they usually give out some stuff. Hey, yeah, it'll be maybe, cool. maybe some more of those IHOP sleeves or a set of sleeves is going for like three fifty on, on eBay. Maybe we'll have some of those. Wait, like $3 and 50 cents. Nope. The other three fifty. What? For sleeves? Sleeves in those play mats that have like the mana symbols on pancakes. Oh, shit. You, you remember seeing those in Vegas? At yeah. The, at like the IHOP lounge or whatever? Those were free. I know. And I was a dumbass and drinking too much beer, because Vegas, to go over and say, hey, can I have some of these? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Well, I guess the TARDIS that we got for free? Yeah. Those are selling for like a hundred bucks too. <laughs> so that yeah, the Surge Foil TARDIS. Yeah, giveaway stuff is nuts. Yeah, we're playing a TARDIS in yeah. today's deck. I got like four of those TARDISes too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I got like a play set of Surge Foil TARDISes because I Quadris. took pictures with lots of people that I wanted to like. There you I go. I got one with you and DJ and I got one with you and a Amy. And yeah. Like I took TARDIS pictures with lots of people because yeah. I was pretty excited that, that it was there. I don't know if that was the real one, but in my heart, it was the real TARDIS. There it is. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's flip over to some cards. Maybe we'll talk about the TARDIS a little bit. We've got some Cascade to do. And remember, I've got a Cascade deck, so I'm going to be a little bit critical. We're going to go through the rules minutia and we're going to take a look at and see what we can see. Okay. Okay. All right, 12th Doctor, Clara Oswald, we're doubling triggers, we're making one giant dude, probably, and Clara Oswald is also here. Where should we start, Ryan? Let's start with the ramp, because therein lies the first challenge of building a Cascade deck, because remember, we're going to Cascade, and we're going to get into that rules minutia right after this. Okay, so I'll do this. There's 14 pieces of ramp. I think we singled out one of them to talk about, because it's cool. The rest of these you're going to know. They are... Three visits, thought vessel, talisman of impulse, curiosity, and creativity, sonic screwdriver, solemn simulacrum, sol ring, sol talisman, RMS, titanic, far seat, cultivate, commander sphere, arcane, signet. Oh, okay. You wanted to maybe talk about the Titanic? Yeah, because the RMS Titanic is super cool, and okay. it was a really good Christmas special. It had Kylie Minogue in it. Oh, man, I like Kylie Minogue. Yeah, I like Kylie yeah. Minogue, too. So she, it, this, this thing is a red three for a 7-1 vehicle that crews for three. Neat. Flying and trample. Also neat when it deals combat damage to a player, sack it and create that many treasure tokens. There you go. Just cool, right? So you're going to pay four, crew something, hit them for seven, 
and essentially be up three mana from the four that you spent on it. Yeah. And okay. So you've spent the four mana to do seven damage, which is pretty good. Yeah. Then you get seven mana back. That's how I look at it. Yeah. Plus yeah. seven artifact ETBs. Oh, yeah. Or seven sack triggers. Or if you can pump it in any way, shape, or form. Yes. Also that. Give it to Xenagos. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Make 14 <laughs> Oh, yes, oh. yes. Let's hit him with some science quick. 14? Bigger than 7. Yes, twice as big. Yes. Yes, very good. Okay, so here's the problem with Mana Rocks or Ramp and Cascade. Okay. Is by the time turn 8 or 10 hits and I want to cast an Annoyed Altasaur, Apex Daddy, or or whatever big 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 drop Cascade spell. Right. Talisman Impulse makes it Frickin' terrible cascade. It's bad. Yes, it does. It's bad. It sure is. So yep. how do you balance that? You go, hmm, I'll play less mana rocks and less ramp. Ooh, that's Ooh, bad too. That's also not very <laughs> oh, good. Oh man, that sucks. So maybe I'll play more land. That's okay, but then if you want to play all the cascade spells, there's less room for other stuff that makes your deck run, like other card draw or removal or other strategic includes. Hmm. Because you're making room by playing like 38 or 39 land. So you can hit a land on every turn just linearly. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, this, that's the main challenge for Cascade in my estimation. Speaking as somebody who's spent a lot of time building, thinking about developing a, a dedicated Cascade deck. Right. So. That is what it is. Now, cards like And this is a high density of ramp too. Like 14 is a lot. Yep. Like you're going to ca- you're going to cascade into these cards often. like Sonic Screwdriver that give you abilities to untap target artifact or to scry or target creature can't be blocked. Sure. Things that give you outside utility, cards like Mindstone that let you sack to draw a card. If you cast your Apex Elt or your um Apex Devastator, sure, and then cascade into a Mind Stone, you might have a mana left over to cash it in to draw a card. Or you get your Commander Sphere, you can just cash it in. You can make a mana and draw a card. Exactly. So that's why I play any mana rock that lets you draw a card in my Cascade deck. You mean to tell me that it might be better to take out all these two-drop mana rocks and replace them with, oh, I don't know, three-drop mana rocks? I do. That have super sweet abilities? I do. Ooh. I, I do. And uh, that's what I do. And the downside of that is you can't make mana early in the game. Oh, bunk. So the other thing that I would recommend is is the things like uh, the, the one drops, like um, Serum Visions or Ponder Preordain, where you can scry or put stuff back. Right. Even, even Brainstorm, I guess, right. because that's going to help you put your land in the right spot and put your Cascades in the right spot. Play Top. Top is also good in a Cascade deck. Yeah. Just cascade into top. Yeah, if there's something that you don't want to cascade into that you want in your hand, switch the top and that thing, cascade into top. And then top again. You could. See, it's yeah, perfect. There you go. It's perfect. Okay, it's perfect so I guess, Where we I, go next? I guess just watch out for a ramp. Now, next is removal. Uh, okay, ooh, 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 let me hit this one again. Okay, here we go. Here, here we go. Reverse polarity, re- reclamation sage, natural reclamation, cyber conversion, chaos warp, beast within. And I think all of these were Doctor Who, nope. Uh, nearly all of them are Doctor Who includes, right? I believe so. All of them except for Rex Sage and Natural Reclamation. Yeah. And I think that was Reverse... No, Reverse Polarity isn't a new card, is it? No, uh, it is. It is. It, it is? was on my top five c- coolest, best cards from Doctor Who. This card is, like, really good. Blue, blue, one instant. Choose one. Counter all other spells. Uh-huh. Switch each creature's power and toughness until end of turn. Creatures can't be blocked this turn. So creatures can't be blocked this turn. That makes it an offensive counterspell threat. Neat. Like if if you're attacking Fu Smitty, right? <laughs> guess what, Smitty? Creatures can't block this turn. <laughs> if I'm attacking Uncle Brando, yeah. guess what? Creatures can't block this turn. <laughs> or if there's a counter war, or if you try to counter my counterspell, I'll just use this and counter all spells. It's pretty good. You counter your own spell, except for this one. Well, yeah, but the, you just counter your own spell. Why would you waste that on that particular situation? Well, if... if uh, I'm going to counter your spell. Well, I'm going to counter your spell and my spell. Fuck you. If, That's a terrible yes, idea. Yes, yes. Or if somebody plays a removal spell and I don't want your thing dead, you try to counter it. Yeah, I suppose. And somebody counters your counter... You know, it just stops counter wars. Sure. And then, of course, switching power and toughness might Is, be good. It, maybe that'll come up someday. That's a situation. Someday yeah. that might come up. 
And then Rex, Rex Age comes in, kills a thing. Natural Reclamation is a Cascade. So green four Cascade, destroy an artifact or enchantment. Yes. So let's take a quick look at Cascade real quick. Remember, Cascade only happens when you cast it. Yes. When you copy a spell, like with the 12th Doctor, uh -huh. you don't get an additional Cascade. Uh -huh. It's a cast trigger. So with our commander, we're going to, let's, let's use the, we're going to cast our Natural Reclamation. Sure. Kill your Sol Ring. Then we're going to go down until we hit, let's just say the first thing I look at, which is Swift Foot Boots. Yes. Because it's the first spell we cast from anywhere other than our hand, we demonstrate it. Thus, we get one. So we have two pairs of boots. Yes. And you have one pair of boots. Yes. Now. And if Swift Foot Boots had Cascade, the same thing would apply, except for we would then Cascade for one. Uh, if we... Cascade into a Cascader. So let's say <laughs> let's say we cast our natural reclamation targeting a soul ring. Ooh, and then we get wild magic sorcerer. That's the first cascade spell. Uh that doesn't have cascade though. Uh, what the hell is in the cascade section for then? Well, because it gives something cascade. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> let's pick a new example. Uh. We've got a card called Sweet Gum Recluse. That's a six drop cascader. Okay? Okay. It can cascade down into a five drop noise marine. Okay. That also has cascade. Okay. okay. So we cast our sweet gum recluse and it's on the stack. Mm -hmm. We exile cards from the top of our library until we hit a card that costs five or less. Noise marine. Noise marine costs five. Mm -hmm. That would go on the stack mm -hmm. above the sweet gum recluse. Mm -hmm. Let's say... And the 12th Doctor sees that. 12th Doctor sees that mm -hmm. because we're casting it. Now, it has Cascade and Demonstrate, because it gains Demonstrate, also a cast trigger. Mm -hmm. So we can choose to Demonstrate or to Cascade again and put either of those on top of each other on the stack because they trigger at the same time. Mm -hmm. We can Demonstrate the Noise Marine. Mm -hmm. And choose an opponent immediately. Mm -hmm. They get a copy of Noise Marine, and we get another copy of Noise Marine. Noise Marine being a 3 2 with Sonic Blaster. When Noise Marine enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to the number of spells you've cast this turn to any target. Correct. So they would get their Noise Marine, we would get our Noise Marine. Our copy of it mm -hmm. would not cascade because we're not casting it. Right, and neither would theirs. Correct. But our original one, because Cascade casts the spell, yeah. the original one will Cascade. And then we would go down, 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 down in our library until we found something that costs four or less. Yes. So out of those three Noise Marines that are created, only one Cascades. Yes. And uh, the, the copies of them that are created by Demonstrate, one for me, one for my opponent that I chose, would be tokens in this case. And how many, and in this exact case? Yes. So we've cascaded, we've demonstrated, how many tokens, counters does our 12th Doctor get? Is it four? Whenever you copy a spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on the 12th Doctor. Okay. Cast a spell, so or copy a spell. Whenever you copy a spell, so we copied Noise Marine two times, once for us, once for our opponent. Okay. And if we have Clara Oswald, we would double that. So we would have four counters on him. So he'd be an 8-8. Okay. Whenever you copy a spell. So Noise Marine and Noise Marine. Uh -huh. That's two spells. Uh -huh. Or two things copied. Uh -huh. um, and then he's an 8-8. Clara Oswald. Because those are whenever those trigger separately. And then Clara Oswald would double both of those triggers. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he'd be an 8-8 if we went Sweet Grom Recluse into Noise Marine. Okay. No, if we went Sweet Gum Recluse into Noise Mer Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, yeah. you're only copying it with the thing. Okay. So now that we've got that nightmare out of the way, let's talk about some what these actual cards Let's do. talk about the rest of the other uh, 14 nightmares. Let's let's do that. So with Sweet Gum Recluse, we should probably read. It's a 0-3 for fucking 6. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, guys. Flash Cascade Reach whenever it enters the battlefield. Put three plus one plus one counters on each of any number of target creatures that entered the battlefield this turn. Yeah, you probably just put the counters on it, and it becomes a three six. 
Sure. Sure. Whatever. What works good with the um with that um reverse the polarity. There you go. There you go. There sure. you go. Sure. Sure. Uh, Wild Magic Sorcerer. We talked about him earlier. He's a 4-3 for 4, one of which is red. First spell you cast from exile each turn has Cascade. So if you Cascade into something that doesn't have Cascade, it gets Cascade. And if you have, if you Cascade into something that has Cascade, it has Cascade, Cascade now. Because multiple instances of Cascade both trigger separately. Wonderful. Or each trigger separately if you have more than two. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Volcanic Torrent. Oh, I like this card. It deals X damage to each creature and planeswalker your opponent's control, where X is the number of spells you cast this turn. So it's at least two damage, because this one and whatever it cascades into. Because it checks after it resol- It checks when it resolves, which is after the thing it cascaded into resolves. It's at least two for five. Yes, but when you've got 14 cascaders and six other things that care about Cascade and you could also cast other stuff from your hand like one drops and two drops? It's in here because it has Cascade, not because it's a good card. Yes. TARDIS. TARDIS. Oh, here it is. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Oh, the non-surge foil? Yeah. 50 cents. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Two drop flying vehicle, two four. When TARDIS attacks, if you control a Time Lord, that would be our commander, right? Yep. The next spell you cast this turn uh, has Cascade, and you may Planeswalk. And it crews for two. So sure. that's that we, we know why that's in there. It's yeah. very clear why yeah. that's there. We've already talked about Sweet Gum and Noise Marine. We've got Maelstrom Wanderer. Oh, Everybody yeah. knows this one by now. Cascade, Cascade, and also creatures you control, including itself, have haste. That's a 7-5 for 8. Let the galaxy burn. Oh, this is a cool one. Okay, so this is Red 5X. Jesus. Yeah, so natively, six drop with Cascade. Okay. And Let the Galaxy Burn deals X damage plus two, X plus two damage to each creature that didn't enter the battlefield this turn. Sure. Ooh, so it'll it'll Cascade into stuff, and then if that stuff enters the battlefield, this won't get it. That's something. Yep. Into the Time Vortex. Cascade for five. And also Rebound, which is, oh, Rebound casts from Exile, doesn't it? It sure does. Instead of putting this into your graveyard, you Exile it, and then you cast it during your next upkeep. Yeah. Yeah. Upkeep, right? Yep. Upkeep, yeah. So this would cast from Exile, triggering your Doctor. Sure would. You could demonstrate this. You could. And then your opponent doesn't even get the Cascade. (laughs) They get nothing. They get literal nothing. They get literal nothing (laughs) from it. (laughs) Cool. Emoti Celebrant of Bounty. That is Cascade for five. And five drop. When I say cascade for five, that means it's a five drop. Yes. Okay, okay. Spells you cast with converted mana cost six or greater have cascade. Sure they do. Now let's read the really exciting part about that card, Ryan. What kind of creature is it? It's a Naga Druid. What does that mean in real life, Ryan? Because of people in the nation, it's a snake druid. Yes. Heralds of... Yes, this is a five drop flying cascade three three demon. Dark apostle. Dark asshole. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, this I like is, that. This has gift of chaos. It's three tap. The next non creature spell you cast this turn has cascade. And it's a three three for four. Is cascade the most mana greedy mechanic that there uh, is? I don't know. Like I think it might be. This this card seems good along with another card that we're going to talk about i don't think that this card is that good i agree anyways but braid elf oh yeah three two haste cascade for four that's a good card bigger on the inside <laughs> like your oh, mother's he... huge ass yes <laughs> <laughs> this is why we're friends <laughs> <laughs> i need a copy of this you got this card uh not anymore frick yeah okay Green, red, three, enchant artifact or land. Enchanted permanent has, tap. Target player adds two mana to their mana pool of any color. And when you spend that mana, the thing that they cast gains cascade. That's neat. Yeah, that's a good one. Aura Phoenix. Aurora Phoenix. Whatever. Extra syllables there, Uncle Brando. Ah, whatever. It's a 5-3 flyer for six, has cascade. And when you cast a spell with cascade, return it from your graveyard to your hand. There you go. Apex Devastator. Apex Daddy. Four Cascades, and it's a 10-10 for 10. 
Annoyed Ultrasaur. Oh, yeah. This is a 6-5. Reach. Reach around. Yep. Trample. Yep. Cascade. Yep. Seven drop. Sure. That card's good. He's got a stupid face. <laughs> like He's trying to eat that harpy, and he's got those weird square teeth. He looks like a titan from Attack on Titan, kind of. He, he kind of looks like he's got those, like, he's got, like, fake people teeth in, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd know if you were watching on YouTube. Oh, uh, which it should be. Yeah. So we've done removal. Let's do protection. We've already talked about a couple of them. We have Greaves, we have Boots, and we have Time Lord Regeneration. That's an instant for one blue until end of turn target Time Lord you control gains. When this creature eats shit, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a Time Lord creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest in the bottom of your library in random order. Are we playing other Time Lords? I don't even care. I don't know. Probably, maybe. I don't know. And if we're not, that's going to be pretty funny because it'll get literal nothing. Yeah. Actually, that'd be super funny, actually. <laughs> yeah. If you just reveal your whole deck and then go, yep. Failed to find? You like that? I'm going to shuffle? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's plug on, shall Let we? Let us plus. So we have hoop. What do we got? We got rewards for hoop. Let's do the draw section. Draw sure. section has some neat stuff. Sure. Wheel of Fate. Now, ooh, I think this might be a little bit of a trap card in a Cascade deck. Yes. Because... Okay, so it costs zero. So literally anything can cascade into it, right? Yep. yep. Okay, and it's a Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. Each player discards their hand, draws seven. Neat. I've found from my experience in cascading that I don't want to do that. Usually I'm sculpting my hand in the top of my library such that I know this is what I'm going to cast. This is my cascader. This is what I'm going to do. Hmm. So the card's good. That's fine. Yeah. Truth or consequences. All right. Uh, red, blue, two. Each player secretly votes for truth oh, or... Con oh, come I, on. I hate this card. Then those votes are revealed. You draw cards equal to the number of truth votes, which is fine. Then choose an opponent at random. At random? Random. Oh. And it threes them for each consequences vote. So you're going to draw one card and then nine somebody at random. Okay, I don't hate that. That's that's how <laughs> that's what that card will do unless everybody's at nine. That's what that yeah, card will if do. If anybody's below nine, yes. I you know what? Okay, I don't mind that. Surge of brilliance. Surge of B. Draw a card for each spell you've cast from anywhere other than your hand this turn. And as foretell for blue one. I don't mind that card. It's not too bad. Yeah, it's good in a cascade deck. Inspiring Refrain. What is up with that guy's face? That's an Ood. An Ood? Yeah, they're very nice. Although they do try and kill people on lots of occasions, it's because people are mean to them. You, I don't want to say what I think his face looks like. Like a vagina. Like a fucked up vagina. That's what his face looked like. looks like. And this card is blue, blue four, draw two cards, exile it with three time counters on it, and it also has suspend three, four, Blue two. So once you've cast it, you will just keep casting it over and over again. Every you three turns. Draw you just keep two cards and you exile it with three time counters on it. Yeah, and since it has suspend, it'll like Man. Bup, 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 I like that again. card, but why is it gotta cost six? I guess it costs three. Yeah. Because it's I, I don't, don't I don't mind that. It's a fine card. Okay. Genesis Ultimatum. Oh, I used to play this in my cascader. Oh. Okay, so this is these ultimatums, hey? Yeah. They get you every time. Every time. Okay, red, red, blue, blue, blue. Green, green. This better do something good. You're, you're with me still? I am. Sorcery? Yep. Look at the top five cards of your library. Put any number of permanents from among them onto the B, and the rest, guess where they go? Where? Into your freaking hand. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a seven mana, uh, probably uh, get three things for free, draw two. I guess that's okay. Yeah, you don't cascade off of it, right? Like, no. I wish it was reveal the top five, cast any number of permanents. Mm -hmm. That would be so powerful in this deck. And that's why it's not that. Yes. Yes. I mean, yes. that'd be cool to, like, copy with the 12th Doctor, I guess. But Factor oh, Fiction's man, the next hey, card, that, I guess, that yeah. would be cool to copy. Okay, cascade into that and then yeah. copy, demonstrate that. That'd be pretty good. I, I mean, like, to, you, I although get, you don't want you, you don't want to demonstrate that. You, 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 uh, 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 uh. Oh, yeah, I do. No, you don't. Because I get to get 10 things. I mean, yeah, but you're playing this deck. And nothing against Zoidberg Jesus, but if you're just putting these permanents into play with no 
Which yeah, some of it. these permanents no are pretty benefit. good compared to like my opponent gets like a freaking a tolly and a blight steel. Yeah, I'm not competing with those. Yes, you're describing my Hirobi deck to me. I'm going to get two Ulamogs and a Dark Depths and a yes and a Thespian stage. <laughs> Thinking you're going to take a whole plate of shit to the mouth. So this is a yes. dangerous card, but fun still. Yes, Factor high, Fiction is high next. risk, high reward, baby. Cascade, reveal the top five cards of your library. An opponent separates them into two piles. We get one. The other one goes uh, to the graveyard. Decaying time loop. Hey. Or decaying time poop. <laughs> I like that better. Because they're all running to the bathroom <laughs> on the card. I like that. Okay, this is an instant, mind you. Yep. Okay, red, three, instant. Discard all cards from your hand. Yes. <laughs> then draw that many cards. Retrace. I don't know about this one. Oh. I don't know about this one. How many cards am I going to have when I cascade into this? I don't know, like two. Because it costs four, hey? Three, maybe. So I'm going to draw six off of it over the course of... Yeah, this is a tough one. Yeah, that's a hard... I don't, I don't like that one very much. Uh, asshole Vision. Ass Vision. Yep. Oh. That's Ancestral Vision. It's a uh, Power Nine card. Yeah. Ancestral Recall, but with Suspend four for a blue. Or if you cascade into it, you just draw three cards. Yeah, do you like this card in Commander generally? Eh. Like on turn four, you draw three cards. That's fine. Or on turn 12, because it's turn eight when you draw it. <laughs> Do you like this card? No. I, I've, I've never played it ever. Unless you can cheat and, it, right? Yeah. If like you can cheat Cascade. it, that's fine. But even then, like, I, what if I draw it? It's a it's a dead draw most of the time. Yeah. It's good if you have it in your opener. Yes. And it's good if you Cascade into it. Other than that, it's just not good. I should probably play that in my Cascade deck, hey? Couldn't hurt. Yeah. Of course, fine. it costs 18 Canadian dollars, but oh, that's fine. Oh, frick. <laughs> okay. So, part of our... We've talked Cascade ad nauseum, so to speak. Mm -hmm. The Twelfth Doctor also gives a shit about casting things from not your hand. And we don't really... We haven't really discussed that too much. Yeah, this is this is like foregoing Cascade and going straight to the source. So, let's, let's get into some of these. First off, we have the Parting of Ways. The P of W. Six drop, uh, Saga, chapter one, exile the top five, freaking five Ooh. cards in your library. Oh, For man. each non-land card exiled this way, you may put a something, some, I don't know what this You does. suspend it for its mana value, so oh. if it's a six drop, it suspends six, one drop suspends one, zero oh. drop, you cast it right now, I guess? I don't know. Is that how that would work? Probably not. Either, And then they gain suspend if they don't have suspend. Okay. Chapter Chapter two is you time travel, then time travel again, so you can add or remove a time counter yep. from something with a time counter on it. Chapter three is for each opponent, destroy up to one target artifact that player controls. Well, that's good. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's good because it's essentially a, uh, well, how many, you reveal the top five, how many are you going to hit on non-lands? Three. Three, probably. Probably three. And, and all then... of those three are going to count as casting from exile. That's the important part. Mm -hmm. When you cast from exile, you're going to put plus one, plus one counters on your commander, and it might be two plus ones mm -hmm. if... Claire Oswald's out. And you can demonstrate one of them, too. Also, yes. Yes. You can demonstrate all of them if they happen on different turns. Yeah. Yes. Neat. Okay. Okay. The Foretold Soldier. The four Soldier. The, the Foreskin Soldier. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yep. Must yeah. be blocked. Can't be blocked by more than one guy. Whenever it deals damage, exile it face down. It becomes foretold. It's foretell cost is green one. And to foretell, you pay green one. And cast it from exile. Cast it from exile. Yep. It's kind of like morph, but from exile. Sucky. Hey? Yeah, I suppose I've so. I've never cast, I don't think I've ever seen cast a foretell card, but in this case, we're casting it from exile. Ooh, uh, there's an ooze. Green slime or something. It counters oh, yeah? a, the, an activated ability and kills the thing that ability was activated. That's a good one. Okay. Yeah, foretell that shit. The fox. Yes. Okay. Red, red, two, chapter one, the fox deals four damage to target creature or oppo uh, an opponent controls. Sure. That's good. It's a removal spell for four, gets four drop. Good. Boom. Chapter two, three, four, five, all, exile the top card of your library, and you may play that card this turn. Neat. That's from exile. This is a four drop Phyrexian Arena kind of in red. Yeah. I'll take it after I'll, it removed something. I'll do that. Chapter 86. Add six red. <laughs> this is actually really good with Let the Galaxy Burn. Yeah. Or 
uh, by this time adding six red, like on turn 10, you're going to have 18 mana available to you. So you could go like Annoyed Altasaur and Apex Devastator, same turn. That's pretty good. That's pretty freaking yes, cool. That's not too bad. Ryan Sinclair. Oh, your good friend Ryan. There he yeah. is. Uh, whenever he attacks, exile the top card of your library, and it's an on land. You can cast it, and it deals damage equal to his power or some shit. I don't know. It's cast from exile. Yes, that is, <laughs> that is in fact, what it does. <laughs> good job, guys. Yeah. Good job, Commander Kirkwood, well, in telling me what cards do. That There's too many words on that. To, what it says is it fucking twos something. Who cares? River Song's <laughs> Diary is the next card. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> River Song Diary. This is a three-drop artifact that whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell from their hand, oh, okay, Ooh. that's that's me, that's us, mm -hmm. exile it instead of putting it into its graveyard as it resolves. Yes. Okay. Also, at the beginning of my upkeep, if there are four or more cards exiled with River Song's Butthole Diary, mm -hmm. choose one of them at random, and I can cast it without paying its mana cost. Neat. And you get your opponent's stuff with that, too, which is kind of neat. Hey, that's actually good. Yeah, usually removal or ramp spells, right? Yeah. That's of course, if it's removal, sometimes you can get got with that, right? Like, here's a Blasphemous Act, you dink. And oh, then, then randomly you get that one? randomly Blasphemous Act? Like, ah, shit. Well, your commander might be big enough to freaking live. Maybe. Because maybe. we're casting so much stuff from exile. Could happen. Heaven Sent. Heaven Sent. Okay. Chapter 1 and 2 are Investigate. And chapter three is Heaven Sent deals one damage to each opponent. Then if an opponent has zero or less life, <laughs> draw seven <laughs> cards. Otherwise, exile Heaven Sent and you may cast it this turn. And it costs red, uh, uh, red blue. That's kind of, that's okay. Actually. That's okay because like that. investigating is okay. Nah, it sucks. But the if somebody is at zero or less life, draw seven, that's awesome. And it lets us cast it from exile, which... Then you can have two of them. We would have two of them. Investigating two times a turn is okay. Investigating twice is better than investigating once. I suppose. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to two some son of a bitch and kill him and draw seven. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, I like that Remember, one. though, every time that we, we do that, every time we cast from exile, our opponent also gets it. Yeah. <laughs> So the poor sucker that's at like no life is just like, ah, ah, they're just getting pinged heaven by these sent. stupid. Yeah, everybody's got heaven sent except for like one guy. Yeah, they're all just <laughs> getting pinged. They're like, just no, getting come on. pounded. <laughs> <laughs> Flamekin Herald. Oh, trap card. Trap card uh, indeed. Sort of. Not a trap card. Is it though? You've activated my trap card, yes. Well, this is, okay. Commander spells you cast have cascade. It's a three, two for three. Yeah, balls that. In a three drop cascade commander deck, trap card. Because you can't cast it and your commander the same turn. Yep. But this one costs less than both of my commanders. Nah. So maybe not trap card. Trap card. It's fine in Cascade decks where your commander does not cost three. Play share the spoils. Sure. Yep. Better card. Atali Primal Storm. We all know Atali at this point. Yes. It comes into play for six. It's a six six. It immediately gets removed and doesn't do anything. Next card is Ecstatic <laughs> Beauty. <laughs> it does cast stuff though, right? What? I, I, I wouldn't know. I've never attacked with it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing Alan for Mental Misplay. One time he attacked me with a tolly. Oh, what happened? Uh, he took the top card of everybody's library. What? And non-lands, he cast them for free. Holy shit. And because they're they're exiled, wow. he's casting them from exile. So he would, he would um, demonstrate one of them. Oh, wow. And then his doctor would get a plus one, plus one count. Oh, wow. That'd be cool. Yeah, that's a good card. That is pretty good. Ecstatic Beauty is the last card in this section. It's a suspend four for red or red to sorcery. Exile the top three cards of your library. You may play those cards until end of turn. Put four time counters on it, and then you can do it again like in four turns from now. Sure. Sure. Okay. Sure. That's all of those. Now, we're jumping through hoops, we're cascading, we're exiling cards, we're doing all this stuff. Is there any benefit to doing everything the hard way in this deck, Ryan? Oh, man. We love doing stuff the hard way on Commander Cook. We do. Hey. And we have at least <laughs> six ways to benefit from just sweating because you're trying so hard to do this stuff. I like hoop rewards, and I like sweating. <laughs> <laughs> hoop reward number one, Keeper of Secrets. Oh, I think this is a trap card. 
This is a trap card in, in Cascade decks. This right. is a 6-4 demon for red 5. Okay. Okay, 6 for 6, first strike haste. Okay, it seems okay. It's $17. Yeah. So, I mean, it must be kind of okay. It, it must be. Symphony of Pain must be a great ability. Okay, Symphony of Pain. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, Keeper of Secrets deals damage equal to that spell's converted mana cost to target opponent. That's fine. Whenever I cascade into something, mm -hmm. that something deals damage. Right. Well, Keeper of Secrets does, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Whenever I exile and then cast, mm -hmm. it's really good with Atali if I cast like three things. Yeah, lol, if Atali ever attacked. Yeah. Yeah, lol. This is a tough one because it seems like it does good work for you, but I don't know, man. Eh, it's probably good. Yeah. What about Araxa, Empress of Mars? That's a funny picture. That is a, it's like a, it looks like a dick, let's be honest. Five, four, he looks like a... If you're a super advanced spaceman and you can have your helmet look like literally anything, why do you pick a dick? Because that's like 70s pulp fiction. Why do you want your head to look like a cock? Even in the 70s. They called people dickheads in the 70s. Oh man, I think I think especially you wanted that in the 70s. You want to look like a dickhead? Yes. Man. The more phallic you phallic looking you were in the 70s, the better. Really? I think so. Man, I'm glad Maybe I that wasn't was the around 60s. Then. Nah, that sounds like Shut the up. 70s. You were already a grown man in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is a 5-4 Trampski alien warrior for four. Oh, shit. See, that's already good. That's fine. It's got battle cry, so whenever it attacks, all the other attacking creatures get buff. Sure. Whenever you cast a spell from, guess where, anywhere except your hand, yep. you get a 2-2 two, two red alien warrior creature token. It's okay. That's pretty good. That's going to give bad. you that's going to give you an army in this deck, I think. Give you some dudes. Yeah. Inevitable betrayal. That's a suspend only card. I like this card. Okay, search an opponent's library for a creature card and put it onto the battlefield under our control. Yeah. Then that player shuffles. Yeah. So this is um uh what's the Is it, is it blatant thievery? No. Is it blatant thievery? Is it uh, It's got to be I think it's Blade of Thievery. Anyway, it's, it's it's good. It steals their guy out of their deck. Yeah, it's super good. And you cascade into it. Yeah. So I like that. I like that card lots. Yeah. Now here's a card I super oh, like. Oh, yeah, I know. I, that. This is your oh, favorite card out of the set. Give it, it a sure read. sure is. Flaming Tyrannosaurus. One of my second, my second favorite card of all time. 5-5 five, five for Red Red 5. Menace. I don't know what that does, but I'm sure it's great. It has Paradox. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, Flaming Tyrannosaurus deals three damage to any target, then put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And whenever Flaming Tyrannosaurus eats shit, it deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. That's pretty good. That's a good ass card. Yep. Oh, man. And it looks really good in Extended Art Surge Foil, too. Ooh. Yeah, very, yeah, very pretty, yeah, as well as yeah. being a literal Tyrannosaurus that's on fire, yes. which is awesome. Yeah. Here's a card that I actually built a deck around at one point. There you go. Valdorn Dreadwolf Herald, or Scary Wolf Lady, as I call her. Give her a read. Three, three for three. Grohl is involved. Whenever you cast a spell from exile or a land enters the battlefield under your control from exile, you make a two, two green wolf. It has one tap. Discard a C, exile the top card of your L. You may play it this turn. That services all areas of the deck that we are trying to operate in. And she's sexy. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Mm -hmm. And the last card Ryan is very familiar with, it's Averna the Chaos Blue. Oh, yeah, a deck that I've built a deck around. That you talk about all the time. It's one of our most popular decks of all time. This is a 4-2 Elemental Shaman for red, green, blue, and as you cascade, you may put a land card from among the exiled cards onto the battlefield tapped. So every time you cascade, if you cascade past a land, you can pick one of them and put it onto the B tapped. Any Neat. land. Neat. Doesn't count as a land uh, play, but it does count as a landfall. Yeah. And it does kind of ramp you. I guess. Sure. Put more land into play. I mean, you've already you already have ten mana because you're playing spells with cascade. But I mean, a little more always helps. Oh, a little bit more is always better than a little bit less. That's true. Your commanders do cost five and six, so having 18 mana will help. Yes. Mm -hmm. So is that the whole deck? That's the whole deck. It's okay. the whole damn deck. Okay, so we've highlighted some of the um, the trap cards, the strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. of Cascade and, mm -hmm. and how complex they can be when you Cascade and double and give your opponents copies and, and stuff. Being have as, as, as we've gone over the rules minutiae of the deck a lot of times in a lot of ways 
we have to point out that is a weakness in a deck like this, especially when the stuff you end up doing after all that Falderall in a lot of cases isn't amazing. Yeah, okay, so my my first... Uh, I had two things that are straddling strength and weakness, okay? And one of them is major rules knowledge required, right? I didn't even go into when you choose to demonstrate and if I cascade into something and with multiple instances of cascade, how to order the demonstrate copies on the stack, who gets where and who gets what, like look that up if you're going to do that kind of, if you're going to build this kind of deck. Mm -hmm. I didn't even go into that and it was complicating enough. Yeah. And like, right? those will result in like, if, if it's been going on for a long time and this deck is slow, so the games will probably go a while. You're going to have people get frustrated and just, and if somebody's new, you're going to lose them. Trying to explain this to a new person, you're, yes. their eyes are going to glaze over and be like, yeah, fuck whatever. I'm never playing yeah. this game again. Yeah. 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 Or, or just, just do it and, and tell me what to copy and, and let me know when it's my turn. Yeah. Right. They're just going to zone out and you're just sitting there basically playing with yourself. So practice, we always say, mm -hmm. practice decks like this, know the rules interactions is very, very important where and when to put things on the stack and in what order and do your best, I guess, to just be an interesting person and, and make it fun, right? Yeah. Which leads to how this deck was kind of presented to me as a group hug, giving my opponents my cascade spells. Right. That's when I started to delve into, uh, okay, demonstrate, does it cast the copy? Does it work? Blah, 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 right? Is group hug a strength or a weakness? You say group hug doesn't exist. Group I'm, hug does not exist. I'm giving you stuff, oh, Mr. Opponent, as a means to leverage it against you or it's bad stuff or it helps me more than it helps you, right? Yes. It's a strategy. Yeah. To try and win the game. Yeah. It's like stacks or control or any other type of deck. Group hug does not exist. <laughs> You're not just there to make your opponents have fun so they can kill you. You're doing pillow fort bullshit or you have a commander that will wipe the floor with any one of your opponents. Yes. And in Th this that's case... That's what you're doing in this deck. In this case, I'm group hugging. Um, Here have a shitty 3-2. Now block my 16-16. Yes. Exactly. Like, that's what it, that's what it is. The, the price of you getting one of my spells is my commander gets two bigger every time. Yes. And I'm going to do that, like, every turn. Yeah, or four bigger. Or four bigger. So yeah. I'm going to attack you for, like, 20 next turn. Yeah. Okay. So this might be a strength in this case. It is. Okay. It is. Well, let's move over to the strength. Oh, wait. One more weakness. Yes. Cascade can be bad in commander. Yes. Nothing sucks worse than Apex daddying and hitting two mana rocks. <laughs> you can... Actually, if you want to see, I... I would argue the worst Apex Devastator resolution oh, no. in history. Watch CCO Sidewalk Slam where I play AV. Because I think it was the first spell I played in six turns. And I think I ended up with a mana dork. And then I got two X spells that were both X oh. equals zero and immediately hit the bin. And maybe a ramp spell or something. So I found a forest and got a one drop mana rock off my... My 10 drop, Cascade, 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 Cascade card. Eek. That's how, what's the word? The Swingy. Yes. How just the odds are sometimes not in your favor with Cascade. Yes. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So it, it really represents a build cost with mana rocks and ramp and things to cash those in for and how you stack and the scry that's required. It's a build cost, right? It's, and it's fun, but it... It's hard to build around because you never know what's coming up unless your deck is constructed in a certain way, Ooh. in which case you end up with the Cascade deck, which we don't want to talk about here. So let's, <laughs> therein lies our strengths. Cascade can be so fun. Yeah. It's literally gambling in Magic the Gathering. Yeah, well, as if, <laughs> as if that's the only way you gamble with Magic the Gathering. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. So other other... Other than being fun and Cascade and Doctor Who, if that's what you're into, because sure. the people who are into the universes beyond stuff are like all the way into they're, it, right? They're, they're in with both feet. Super budget. Now, yeah. check this out. We we mentioned some expensive cards, and the deck itself is like 237 bucks, which, yeah. okay, fine. But if you take out the $66 worth of fetch lands that are in there, yep. and if you take out that trap card, Keeper of Secrets, yep. This deck goes to 150 bucks. It's pretty good. That's like so cheap. Yeah. And you've got a full suite of 
talismans, soul rings, signets. You've got Beast Within Chaos Warp. You've got the Reverse to Polarity. You've got pretty much every Teamer Cascade spell and Cast from Exile thing that you want. And if you bought the, what do you call them? The Precon. This Precon. To, well, th this isn't the Precon. That's the thing. To get this, you have to buy two Precons. Oh, okay. But if you buy the Timey Wimey Precon, where all of the Cascade stuff comes from, now you've got access to the 10th Doctor and a couple other cards that are the in that. The 12th Doctor. No, no. The tenth Doctor oh. is, all, is also a cast is a ca cascade slash suspend cast oh. from exile, homie. Okay, so he can get your. We do have a few time counter things in here. You can get to those faster with him, and they can get you your spells more. Like he puts your stuff when you're beating people to death at the twelfth Doctor. The tenth Doctor will put things into exile for you, so you can cast them later. Oh, so he would be an excellent include to this thing, and you'll have him because you probably bought that deck too. I'm willing to bet that people that are as into Doctor Who cards as Zoidberg Jesus is did buy all four precons. And if you play the tenth Doctor, that Time Lord regeneration card actually works. No, oh. <laughs> which is cool. <laughs> yes, yes. So I don't know. Cool deck, super budget. Two hundred and thirty bucks doesn't seem bad because it does have a lot of good cards in it. Like Apex Devastator could just go in a dinosaur deck, right? Yeah, and cascade into anything. Yeah. Maelstrom Wanderer is very good. Yeah, Wild Magic Sorcerer goes in like every freaking uh, Prosper deck, yeah. right? Like, there's lots of good stuff in here, and the full suite of ramp could be used in any deck that it goes in, and correct or, or sorry, any deck that you build, right? Yes. So Those talismans are so cheap now. I love that. Yeah. It makes me so happy. And if you cut out the the three fetch lands and the keeper of secrets, 150 bucks for cutting four cards. Like that's that's my favorite part of this deck. Is that it's cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I like building cheap decks that like beat wholesale ass. Yeah. Like an Apex Devastator inclusive deck would. Uh, theoretically. Hypothetically speaking. <laughs> yes. yes. There's yes. a good chance. Yes. yes, I love to gamble. <laughs> <laughs> So, Zoyberg Jesus, thank you for sending it in. Thank you for becoming a Patreon supporter over at patreon.com slash the ECO podcast. And uh, if you're newer to the nation, don't forget commandercookout.com where you can find the store, coffee.com slash commandercookout. I had to remind that remind myself of that one in my head. Mm -hmm. And fusiongamingonline.com where you can use both of our promo codes in the show notes wherever you find the show to get a discount on the stuff you're going to buy anyway. You're already buying it. Just pay less. We want you to save money. Yes. Doing so supports the show too. So that's like double timey wimey savings. It's like triple savings. Yes. 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 Final thought of the day. Do you but, have one? Uh, bonus show tomorrow. Bonus show tomorrow. We're going to talk about revisiting planes multiple times and whether or not that's good a feel good thing not yeah. necessarily are the cards good but more like does it keep things fresh and interesting when we've returned to a plane a bunch of times and i'm sure people are out there thinking oh i can think of a few places we've been to a few times ravnica that suck right yeah and so we're going to talk about that and it's going to be a lot of fun and we're going to do that tomorrow on an exciting bonus episode of commander cookout podcast hit our theme song <laughs>